Welcome everybody to my site. My name is Paul and I've been a student of uh, esoteric teachings for a very long time. Ever since I was in college, I've also been fascinated by a lot of the sciences and I was able to grow up in India. I traveled a lot when I was young. My parents took me around and saw some interesting places in the world. And I met a lot of different people and <clears throat> over the years I've gotten inspired to try to learn the basics of human civilization, what, about the rise and fall of civilization. There's so many powerful things that have happened in the history of this world. And along the way, there, human beings have accumulated tremendous amounts of knowledge about various subjects. And if you look into the esoteric teachings, you'll find quickly that it goes down to some very, very simple things. A lot of geometry is involved, for example, and numbers. And ancient people did things very differently and they had a very different uh, perspective on life. But generally, you can see that in ancient history, what was considered fun back in those days of entertainment was to enjoy your own consciousness. We didn't have a, a TV or electronic things to stare at all the time. We had to uh, <clears throat> find ways to uh, enlighten our mind. And what people did was they looked at the stars, they looked at nature, and they looked at, they just had more conversations. They, were very interactive with the animals and plants and so on. So human beings acquired a tremendous amount of valuable information and knowledge that they shared. A lot of it was shared in tremendous architecture. We can see around the world megalithic structures and all kinds of fantastic art and architecture. And it goes back even to cave art. Some of that cave art was just fantastic. I mean, they used whatever materials they had and they made them stunning observations. <clears throat> So it was clear to me as I was growing up that human beings have tremendous, tremendous potential and we're not realizing it. I mean, we have the Da Vinci's and the Michelangelo's and the Newton's and so many thousands of other geniuses that we hear about. But throughout history, there have been millions and millions of really brilliant human beings. They accomplished all kinds of fantastic things. And many of the structures that we see today uh, around the world, we, we, we wonder like how in the world did they even do this? How did they build it? <clears throat> well, I, there's a lot of controversy and discussion about a lot of these things. And rather than try to say, okay, well, I'm the expert. I'm not an expert in anything. But, you know, I can just refer people to what I call the ageless wisdom, the timeless uh, message of um, how things work, cosmology, the stars, and so on. All that's related. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to make segments that I mean, the knowledge is so vast and deep that you really can't just uh, put it all in a sequence like, you know, you have 101, 102. It's not like that. There's a lot of really basic things that if you understand some of the really, really basic things that you can observe for yourself and you put the two to two together in your own brain and you can figure things out. That's how ancient people did it. They observed nature the observed processes and they communicate to other people and they built structures that demonstrate mathematical principles and geometry and so on and uh, that shows a profound understanding of the principles themselves but also the need to communicate and share. So what we have is a problem here now when we make videos like this one it can be put onto a hard drive somewhere in you know, it's vapor. It's just it's like digital information. So what I'm going to try to do as I make these videos, I'm going to take segments and little pieces of information and do kind of like a, you know, as it flows, just non-rehearsed demonstration. And I'm going to make, a, I'm going to write it down on, on paper and notes while I'm doing it. I have the camera over my shoulder and I'll make notes and demonstrate some things that people put these together, look at them later, and you'll see how the ancient teachings that come down to us have been preserved in geometry and, and, and colors, and I'm going to try to explain all that, but the main fascinating thing is that people can learn this on their own. They can go, for example, colors. If you look at colors, colors had a lot of symbolism in ancient mythology and so on, but they also have a, you know, color is a vibration, it's a frequency, certain, there's many different shades of gray, and, and 
many different shades of green and blue and, and so on. So there's all kinds of <clears throat> various frequencies across a massive ba band of spectrum. And our perception <clears throat> is extremely important because <clears throat> if we don't have proper perception that we're only going to be seeing, like for example, we only see like a very small band of the spectrum, we only hear a very small band of the spectrum and so on. Now, ancient the ancient technology of enhancing the mind, enhancing our perception, I mean, people did not have the distractions that we have today. They go, you could sit there all day long and just meditate and have discussions and just get into a blissful state and stay there for long periods of time and discuss what you've understood. Because the refinement of human perception, first of all, we can clearly see by the sculptures and the art and all the different things in the history of the whole world that genius is is inherent in a human being and there has been astounding demonstrations of that over thousands of years and percentage wise I think pretty much a lot of the human beings now we're, we have these great bodies but we're sort of dumbed down because we've lost the capacity to be with what's called gods you might say we, we to have a much vaster understanding of our existence <clears throat> and our capabilities and I you know that gets argued about too you know the chakras and this and then and the levels and planes and consciousness and different kinds of beings people argue about but what I'm trying to do is I'm going to make a whole bunch of series of sharp segments where people can say look I can digest that I can put it together with other things and I can see for myself what is real and intuit and, and broaden my perception because I make a lot of videos of our perception. It's extremely important. Now, I'm just going to read for one little book here. Once upon a time, something like this was called the Quadrivian. If you weren't educated unless you knew some of these basic things, and there's a number of subjects, one in particular is geometry. Okay, you see this thing here? We'll talk about that later. Those shapes, the circle, and the um, the shapes that people see in nature. You see, you look in nature, and nature is an outpouring and out picturing, you might say, of some cosmic intelligence that is inherent in, in nature and, and inherent in the universe. All these waves that we see coming, you know, the, going from galaxy to galaxy and starlight, it's not just random waves, there's information in those waves. And the sun broadcasts vast amounts of information, you might say. There's a radiance and there's that, that what we see, the sun, is not the only part of the sun that, that radiates out into space in this vast thing we call the solar system. So we're going to go from the microcosm to the macrocosm and from the small to the large and back and forth. Because I wrote a little introduction here and this old saying called as above so below is so important we're going to go into that more the whole idea of parallel constructions replication nature is very very efficient and you'll see certain kinds of shapes and certain kinds of geometries constantly exhibited in nature and life forms and there's been many many demonstrations of this but we're going to talk a little bit about it but this book about quadrivium it talks about shapes and geometry. It talks about spirals. It talks. Uh, this is a very big book, so I won't try to explain the whole thing right now. But music is included in this book, and these were the most important subjects that were considered. You had to know something about this to do architecture and healing and everything. So you, this is a fascinating book to explore. But again, the whole parallel that. There's replication, there's what they call fractals, you might say, there's parallel constructions, there's a lot of that going on in the universe. And as you look and observe that, for example, anybody can observe a whirlpool or a little spiral in a little bit of water. And they say, well, that makes sense. So what are the characteristics? So what happens if I put something, if I put a leaf in that spiral, it'll spin and this, this see... And then you look out in this space and you see the spirals of the galaxy. You say, well, look, okay, a spiral in a vortex is a shape that is so fundamental. It's a shape of movement and so on. And, for example, this shape right here, this tetrahedron, 
and these colors. You see, everything is related, and that's what we're going to explore in a lot of these videos. And because it's so complex, you can't really, you know, get into uh, making the whole sequence, as I said. You know, it's just something you put together little by little, and you go from the, the simple and the simple facts and the simple geometries, and then you expand it to other kinds of other aspects of, of our existence. Now, I want to talk a little more about perception before we get into some of the actual, I'll call them lessons, but they're just demonstrations, you might say. And I'm going to do them kind of randomly, and I'm not going to edit them very much. So I'm going to add as much uh, imagery and perhaps sounds as I can, uh, you know, when I make these videos. But I'm a little bit of production, and I just have a, you know, basic system here. But I'm going to write things down and make drawings as some of the demonstrations. Now, I want to again get back to perception because we have the most important question that we all have before we even begin any kind of science, any kind of investigation, is the old question of who are we? And what is, what is this vehicle? What is this? Who, what are, what's living in this body? See, this is a very, very old question, and I'm just kind of just briefly here, but the ancient systems of meditation involved self-knowledge because, as again, as above, so below, as within, and so without. So by introspection and feeling and meditation, and you start to feel movement and current, and all those different things, aspects of life that are within us as well. There's blood circulation, there's movement, there's sound, there's light, there's heat. There's visualization, there's electricity all within this particular vehicle. And you might say that this vehicle might say represents a solar system. And part of the ancient teachings, uh, it'd be to say that a planet, for example, is a different kind of a being. We anthropomorphize it because we're a being. We just have this body. But let's say a physical body, the particular shape of a body is one thing, and the being that is living in the body is another thing. You see, so we'll get into that in some of our discussion. But who we are is just, we can, we can exist without seeing, we can exist without hearing, we can exist without tasting, but we still exist. There's some kind of fundamental existence here that uses our, our vehicle, just like our arm uses the hand, the hand uses the fingers. There's a flow of consciousness and beingness from the fundamental, from the space, from the, from the energetic space and intelligence that is in all, it's embedded in everything, in, in, the, in the space and the energy fields all the relevant information is there, and all we are is a projection of some kind of a, a field, you might say. We're basically just water <laughs> and electricity. And we have a consciousness, and that consciousness uses electricity, and it walks around this body of water and a little bit of minerals and some bones. So it's a very, very amazing thing if we start looking at who we are. We are spectacular. We are... Our being, our body is just an incredible product of millions and millions of lives and evolutions and changes and adaptations and wisdoms, learning and teaching and having progeny and so on. It's just, the human body is incredible, but we're not taught how incredible it really is. And that's where, in some of these ancient cultures, their whole life was about that. They didn't have the shopping at the Walmart. They, that's not what they did for pleasure. Well, oh yeah, today I'm going to the temple. I'm going to sit in five hours of meditation, and then I'm going to hear the, the sounds of the cosmos, and then I'm going to talk with my guru, and then I'm going to get healed, and then the, that's my day. You know, we can have a culture that's based entirely on enlightenment and healing and expansion of consciousness. And I felt very committed because I felt like I've learned so much over the years and like, man, there's so many things that would help everybody. Just simple, simple things that we can learn for ourselves that we, the way to test how it's good is you practice it and you just, knowledge has to be practical. It can't be theoretical. There's so much theoretical stuff online these days and it's good. It gives you a rough, one thing it does is 
hey, you know, life is fantastic. There's people that have all kinds of incredible experiences, and life is amazing. So let me have some of those nice experiences. Let me investigate some of these fantastic mysteries for myself. And then I'm going to have a fuller experience of being a human being. So that's kind of what it's all about. It's about like having some understanding of what this glorious existence is. That we live in this body, but we're not this body. We have to think of ourselves as we're a horse and we're riding this horse. Okay? And if you learn how, how the horse works and cooperate with the horse, you get along just fine. <laughs> the horse goes where you want and so on. So the idea of getting our consciousness above and beyond normal what we call normal senses because let's say any physical sense that we have is already a miracle forget it you know clear audience and all those kinds of things okay but just being able to see and touch and all that that's incredible and we can make it subtler we can get better at touch we can get better at taste we can get better at smell we can get better at seeing by taking care of our body and so on and learning that hey you know Let's say, for example, you, you, you say, I know I can pick up 10 pounds, but one day you pick up 20. Say, well, I didn't know I could pick up 20 pounds. Maybe I'll try 30. See, we have to test our and, and expand on our own. We don't have to compete with other people. We just want to expand ourselves because ultimately it comes down to oneness. It comes down to, you know, there's a certain completeness, you might say, in this universe which we call infinity, okay? And the symbol of that is a circle or a sphere. A sphere has an infinite number of points on it. So if you start with this whole thing, like, look, we are this little individual thing. At least for a moment, we say, I, I know I am something. You don't have to put a label after it, but you say, I'm existing. I am. Whatever I am, I'm going to find out. And finding out what's within is without, what's above is below, what is a microcosm is a microcosm. And there's principles involved that nature and the cosmos and whatever you call God or the intelligence, whatever, is, is profoundly beautiful, profoundly uh, intelligent. And how when we study those things, we become intelligent because our intelligence our consciousness is a factor, is a part of, is like the soil in the, in the ocean. There's millions of beings and they get born in the ocean and they live in the ocean and then they dissolve back into the ocean. And our awareness, we have this thread of our awareness and we have this body and the body is living in this vast cosmos. <clears throat> was born out of the cosmos, out of nothing, came out of cells and water and spark and electricity and heat and prana and so on. And then it became this big being that we have now. We walk around and we forget how glorious it really, really is. So my hope in sharing a lot of these segments, I hope people share them and like them. And I'm going to try to make them brief and illustrative and not be so much of my boring <laughs> presence or personality involved. I want to have a camera on my shoulder and make some drawings and write some notes so that people can see. And then they can know for themselves. Because that's ultimately knowledge that we can use, is that we know for ourselves because we confirm it in our own observation, from our own internal experience. Then we know. And that there's an infinite amount to know. So that's, that's a good thing. There's just an endless journey, and each of us takes it in a little bit different way. And... Uh, that's the beauty because then we can share again again back to my main point is i wanted to share a lot of experiences i've had i practiced meditation for a long time uh, my teacher's name is prem rawat he taught me very simple techniques that i practice still and i've listened very humbly and open-mindedly to many many uh, other kinds of people and discussions and i benefit from all of them i still practice a particular meditation and i can say i've had a lot of profound experiences um really can't say much because you know we're all have our own private experiences but one thing i know for sure that this life is really incredible and uh, we're you know we're here riding on this pony basically <laughs> we're going to be here a short time so there's a certain time of the essence we want to know ourselves we want to discover our full potential and we 
We can't be told how to do this. It's not something someone just tells you, you must do this or much. There's nature's fascinating. The God, consciousness, all that is fascinating, endlessly fascinating. So our own curiosity and our thirst and need to understand is going to drive us to help having real knowledge because curiosity is a holy thing. It's a good thing. It drives us in a certain direction and it draws us answers. But then we got to continue with it because the responsibility is to respond to what we learn. Try to put some things into practice because all the knowledge in the world doesn't do you any good if you don't put it into practice and enjoy the fruits of it every single day in life. And I'll make it a little quick finalize here that I made a few notes here that knowing ourselves involves an increasing our perception and we are more than what we presume. We have a vast unreal life potential. And time is passing, so it's of the essence. And who are we? The first most important question is, and the answer is a continuous process of understanding because it's not like you say, okay, who am I? And then the guru says, okay, well, this is who you are, and here's the sentence. It's not like that. <laughs> it's, here's a door. You walk through this door and explore this vast inner world that parallels the outer world. Again, inner, outer, parallel. There's a psyche, there's a underlying consciousness in the cosmos, and when we look at other, other beings, and instead of seeing them as different, we see them as a part of that existence, just like all the same tree, trees come out of the same soil and go back to the same soil. We all come from the same place, go back to the same place, and all we're doing here is trying to live here and increase our perception and enjoy. So the principles of nature reflect back to us information about our existence and who we are. Again, observing nature. Nature has been observed for thousands of years. In fact, we don't even observe nature now anywhere near as much as they did long ago because they used to sleep off the stars and see, see amazing things. So um, I'm going to start and make again a bunch of videos. So. Please share and like. I know I'm a tiny voice out here. I'm not like infinitely popular. <laughs> it's okay. And if anybody gets any benefit from it, my job is done. So I hope people enjoy my videos and I enjoy feedback and I listen to a lot of content and I certainly appreciate when people share things with me that I have not heard about. So I'm a continuous student and I think we all should be. So I hope you enjoy and thanks again for watching.